Bokatov. Um, today we will be reading from Numbers 25, verses 1 through 6. That's Numbers 25, verses 1 through 6. Israel <laughs> ויאמר אדוני אל משה, קח את כל ראשי העם, והוקע אותם לאדוני נגד השמש. וישוב חרון אף אדוני מישראל, ויאמר משה אל שופטי ישראל, הרגו איש אנשיו וניץ מדים לבעל פאור. והנה, איש מבני ישראל בא ויקרב אל אחיו את המדיינית לעיני משה ולעיני כל עדת בני ישראל והמה בוכים פתח אוהל מועד. While Israel remained at Shittim, the people began to commit infidelity with the daughters of Moab. For they invited the people to the sacrifices of their gods, and the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So Israel became followers of the Baal of Peor, and the Lord was angry with Israel. And the Lord said to Moshe, take all the leaders of the people and execute them in broad daylight before the Lord, so that the fierce anger of the Lord may turn away from Israel. So Moshe said to the judges of Israel, each of you kill his men who have become followers of Baal of Peor. Then, behold, one of the sons of Israel came and brought to his relatives a Midianite woman in the sight of Moses, Moshe and in the sight of the whole congregation of the sons of Israel while they were weeping at the entrance of the tent of meeting. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר הראה לנו רחמים בישוע ונתן לנו ברית חדשה ברוך אתה אדוני נותן המשיח אמן. Blessed are you, O Lord our God King of the universe, who showed us mercy in Yeshua and gave us a new covenant. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Messiah. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Well, this morning we have um, an unusual passage of Scripture. Um, you know, sometimes Scriptures are R-rated if they were made into a movie, and this was one of those sections. Let me say this. God takes sin very seriously. Okay? He takes sin very seriously. So seriously that he became incarnate so that he might shed his own blood as a payment for the penalty of that sin to all who believe. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But he takes sin very seriously, and we are not to presume upon his grace. And that was the situation here. I won't go into all the details, but um, 
the Israelites were very caught up with the worship practices of the surrounding cultures. So much so that they wanted to engage in similar practices. And, uh, well, I love the way the message put it. Uh, uh, it refers to it as the sex and religion idols. And uh, that's what a lot of these surrounding religious practices involved. Yet uh, some of the people were so caught up in uh, these practices that involved this immorality that they wanted to engage in it themselves and began to do so. And so much so that in our passage this morning, it says that um, one of them came and, and, and brought uh, one of these Midianite priestesses uh, into the tent of meetings. And though we don't know exactly all the logistics, many commentators, as I read about this, say that uh, they were actually in the entrance of the tent of meeting engaging in the sexual act itself here in this passage. And of course, uh, if, if we had read one more, gone down just another verse or two, uh, Phineas, uh, the grandson of Aaron, when he saw this, he took a spear and he came in and, and uh, it says that um, he put the spear right through the back of the man on through into the abdomen of the woman that were together doing this act here in their but God brought judgment upon the people because of this. And uh, verse 9 tells us that 24,000 were killed because of a plague, because of the sin of Israel wanting to presume upon the grace of God and carry out these sinful acts. God takes sin very seriously. Now, you may be thinking, well, well, you know, that was thousands of years ago. Um, you know, today is today. That was then. Uh, surely, you know, that is not true today. But, my friends, it is. And I want to tell you just a brief story of how, one example of how it is. In the 1990s, uh, Lynn and I befriended another pastoral couple in the area where we were serving, and God had his hand of blessing upon this pastor. Uh, he had come to his church in 1988, 70 people, and uh, during uh, the 10 years that I was in that area, uh, his church went from 70 to 3,000 people, and uh, this was the, the dominant church of that area. In 1999, uh, well, during that 10-year period, I should say that Lynn and I used to do activities uh, with this couple, go out to dinner and this kind of thing. And though we weren't really close friends, we were friends and, and, and got together occasionally. But in 1999, God led Lynn and I to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and we left the area. And, uh, and, and after we left, uh, my pastoral friend, and this is the guy, we, we did the... the our doctorates together at the same institution, traveled to classes together and, you know, would talk and, and share and this kind of thing. But after we left in 1999, um, he was not responsive. I'd send him emails. I'd call, uh, you know, occasion just to see how he's doing. I wasn't uh, suspecting anything, but uh, he uh, kind of removed me from his life. Well, I later found out that this pastor, at the height of his ministry, he left the wife of his youth, who was our friend as well, and had taken up with another woman uh, in town. And um, obviously, he resigned his position, uh, became a realtor, what pastors often do when they have to quit their church, and, um, and ended up marrying this other woman. On the night of their honeymoon with this second woman, this pastor had a heart attack on his honeymoon night. I couldn't help but think of the judgment of God upon him. 
It was just a few years later, this pastor, shoveling snow, had another heart attack, and this time he died. He thought that uh, he could be arrogant, and even though Scripture, we all know what it says, he was going to do, and his ministry crashed, his life crashed, and ultimately he died. God takes sin very seriously. Now, we praise the Lord for his forgiveness. Uh, his, his grace is new every morning. But we are not to presume upon his grace, especially with an arrogant attitude like these Israelites were doing and like some down throughout the years, like my friend that I shared with you about, have done. Paul, uh, when he uh, referred to this uh, incident in 1 Corinthians 10, uh, he brings it up as a reminder of how we are to conduct ourselves and he gives us uh, a wonderful reminder of God's way of, of, of providing for us. And I'll close with this. Uh, this is 1 Corinthians 10, and uh, chapter or 10, verse, um, is verse 13. And many of you could quote it. It says, God is faithful, and he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can handle. But with the temptation, he will provide a way of escape so that you will be able to endure it. Temptation will come. We are to resist temptation. God will provide a way for us to escape. Amen.